Hey everybody, Ideast here. Um, There's actually a, an article I had read two days ago, and I was going to make a video on it, and uh, the second that I had finished watching it, I reading it rather, um, another article popped up on the missing link, so I figured that was a little bit uh, more of an intriguing uh, recent article to make a video on, so I actually uh, downloaded the uh, Sky TV piece on it and made a video of that, but I wanted to make a video of this and I actually wanted to uh, incorporate a little bit about both of them into this video. Uh, this is basically um, an article about the Komodo dra uh, dragons having a venomous bite. Uh, for years and years and years, uh, everybody thought that there was uh, some type of viral bacteria that would, um, you know, knock the consciousness out of the prey once it was bitten by a Komodo dragon and then it would follow it and as soon as the prey passed out then it would rip it apart and so on and so forth. So basically this is an article from uh, BBC News Channel. I'll post a link to it in the, the information column and you guys can check it out or Google it. I mean it's been all over. I saw it on Yahoo, the first article on it. So anyway, Komodo dragons have a venomous bite. The Komodo dragon has a bite tinged with a deadly venom according to researchers. Previously it was thought that the Komodo's mouth harbored virulent bacteria that quickly infected and subdued prey. But analysis of Komodo specimens has shown a well-developed venom gland with ducts that lead to their large teeth. The proceedings of the National Academy of Scientists report shows that rather than using a strong bite force, Komodos keep a vice-like grip on their prey. In this way the venom can seep into the large runes they make with their teeth. Um, so on and so forth. Basically, the article goes on to tell you a little bit about the uh, Komodo dragon. It's got a light head. Um, it doesn't have a bite like a crocodile does in the strength to actually hold its prey down. It basically takes a, a, a vice-like chunk out of its prey and injects uh, this type of venom. Um, they were able to study one um, recently and they were able to dissect the jaw and they found that there is venom glands in it. Uh, the herpetologists that found it have also went on to um, have, you know, right here, radical suggestions. The uh, Megalania uh, could have been one of the largest venomous animals in history and, you know, it shows how it has uh, evolutionary, the same as, you know, they come from snakes and it would be, you know, suggested that these animals also produced venom similar to the Komodo dragons and that if that holds true that these Megalania would be the largest reptile ever to have uh, venom instead of just being able, you know being eating them like a, a crocodile and so on and so forth basically what bothers me about this it actually doesn't bother me about the article but it actually and how it correlates to the missing link is that the Komodo dragons for years we've been able to study them we've been able to have video on their breeding patterns, on what their diet is, how they eat, how they hunt. I mean, these are things that are still alive. We can study them today. And we still don't know stuff about them. I mean, for years, like I said, everybody thought that it was, uh, you know, from the bacteria in their saliva, once they bit their prey, that actually caused it to go unconscious after a while and get infected and, and die, and then the animal would eat it. And just recently, they find out that the Komodo dragon actually has venom glands in it. So what bothers me about this is that, and this has to do with any type of fossils that we find, paleontologists find, any type of cosmology we do, we're basically gaming and saying that all of these things that we come up with hypotheses on and so on and so forth, and I know we use scientific method and whatever else, but you know, how true are they? How much truth lies in what we know about anything? I mean, we basically use inference on pretty much everything that we do scientifically. We don't really have factual evidence on a lot of the stuff. Um, you know, like this missing link. It could have nothing to do with our evolutionary chain whatsoever. We don't know what it looks like. We've actually never been able to see one. I mean, we can study and infer from other studies that we've done on other bones and fossils and whatever. And the same thing goes with cosmology and, and anything else. I mean, this Komodo dragons are still alive. We've been studying them for years. We've been filming them. We've been studying, like I said, their breeding. We've been studying what their, their eating habits are. And for years, everybody thought that they killed with bacteria. And we just found out recently that they have venom glands and they, they kill similar to a snake. Um, it, it just kind of bothers me that, you know, a lot of people go out there touting stuff that is basically, you know, inference as fact. We have no, we, we actually have such a, an elementary understanding about pretty much anything, even things that we can still study today, 
Never mind things like the missing link fossil that's 47 million years old. And the first thing that they do, and I said this in, in a response, the guy Yorm Horam from uh, the Netherlands that's doing this, that actually bought the fossil, uh, and they're doing a, a special on the History Channel on Monday at 9 o'clock, the 25th, May 25th, at 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time in the United States, if you're interested in watching it. He just did uh, a video the week before, uh, not the week before, last month or the month before, called Predator X. Um, the dinosaur fossil that he found has the most powerful bite ever, more powerful than the Megalodon, more powerful than the T-Rex. And basically, it was a plesiosaurus. Um, and they hype it up on the History Channel so much, and everybody sees it, and the first thing, oh my god, the most powerful dinosaur ever, and now he's back again a month later on the History Channel again, going all over the place, you know, doing press conferences, saying, we found the missing link of history, we found the missing link of history. I'm wondering if there's going to be any rebuttal in the missing link uh, documentary that they have on Monday, uh, because w the problem I have with it is, is that you get these one-sided uh, documentaries, and... Everybody the next day comes out on YouTube and starts saying, oh, well, we found the missing link. Evolution's true. And I mean, I believe in evolution, so that's not the point I'm making. But, you know, we found this and this, and this proves that this isn't true and this and that. And I mean, basically, the information that we have on it is a guess at best. And I just wish that people would be more open-minded. I'm not saying everybody, but I mean, I've already seen videos and responses that, you know, well, this proves that the Bible's full. I, mean, I, I could care less about it, you know. I think evolution's already been proven. I don't really know how many other... And you can say, well, we don't have the transitional fossils and, you know, whatever else. And that's that's enough for another argument anyway. And you can say, well, there's micro and macro evolution. I just think that people should be more humble and, uh, you know, be more scientific and remain open to different possibilities and different explanations for stuff. Because like I said, I think our, our intelligence and our information and everything that we base everything else on is elementary at best we have stuff that's still alive that we don't know shit about that they've been studying for years and think that they have the answers to never mind shit that's been dead for 47 or 100 million years so anyway i just wanted to uh get th to this video because i had been meaning to do it anyway and i came across a missing link one so i threw that one up and uh yeah, I just w wish more people would remain open-minded, not present everything as it's factual evidence, because the evidence changes. If you take any, and I repeat, any book that's ever been written in any of the scientific fields from 50 years ago, 90% of the information that's in them has changed. And in another 50 years, I guarantee you that the information is going to change again. So anyway, just a little food for thought. Until next time, think hard.